Or I saw pursuit pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless your name. We thank you because you have chosen us. Thank you because you have called us. Thank you because you are commissioning us. And even though we may be few compared with the population of the world, you can do a lot of few, sage, good, favored, faithful men and women. And we pray that each of us here will be part of that chosen few in Jesus' name. Whatever Lord will make us like the crowd in the world, multitudes in the world, that you cannot lay your hand upon and use. We pray that those things are cut away from every one of our lives in Jesus' name. All you need in every generation is a few good men that you transform by grace, that you change and send forth. And in every generation, whatever those few people, men or women, whenever they surrender themselves to you, great has been their exploit in the kingdom. And we pray that in this generation of ours, every brother here, every sister here, will have the touch of the Lord in Jesus' name. Count us worthy. Count us committed. Count us consecrated. Count us as part of that faithful field. And Lord, will turn this generation around for your glory in Jesus' name. Strengthen the weak. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. We're reading from Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it as we look at the word of god from the old to the new testament as we look at all the messages given by god to prophets and servants of his you find that word few not many as you look at history and you look at people that make a mark an indelible mark an unforgettable mark upon the lives of people around them you're going to find that word few as you look at all professions in life, in the world, and you see the people that make an unforgettable mark, indispensable mark, in any profession, you're going to find that word, few. You look at people that walk straight. You look at people that live purposeful lives. That the people that separate themselves from the crowd. That the people that are set apart from the multitudes. And then they say, whatever the world thinks, whatever the world may do, they have chosen a path for the few. As we look at the people who are saved, truly saved, Concretely saved, undoubtedly saved, and they are saved for life eternal. As you look at the people that heaven 
affirms their salvation. You are going to find the few. How many thousands followed Jesus Christ every day? How many did he feed with bread? How many did he heal? He healed the nation to that point that even in some cities you could not find any sick person. They came in their multitudes. But after Christ rose from the dead, how many did he find? How many assembled? On the day of Pentecost, in the upper room, you're going to find the few. You come to the Acts of the Apostles, and you find the people that possessed the power of the Holy Ghost, and they are propelled and driven by the Holy Ghost, and it turned the world upside down. How are they? Few. God will use you. If you will set yourself apart, if you say, enough is enough, I've been with the crowd for too long. Enough is enough. I may swallowed up by the multitudes for too long. Enough is enough. I have lost identity because like the chameleon, I took the color of the multitude around me. But now I know the life that remains. Are you there? I said, are you there? Whatever number of years remain. The life that remains, I set myself apart. I'm going to serve the Lord. Somebody there will serve the Lord. What is he there? What is she there? But you'll be ready to come out of that crowd. If you eat like they eat, dress like they dress, think like they think, act like they act, sit like you sit, and uh, you know, you are like them. You cannot change the world. You cannot change your community. The few good men, the few good women that think differently, that see differently, that live differently, that match to a different tune, and they say, I will be different. Those few men, those few women, faithful, favored, set apart, consecrated, committed, those are the people that make it. If you're going to have the salvation that takes us to heaven, you must start there. You must bring yourself apart, different, distinguish from the rest of the world. Somebody told a preacher, he said, the world hates you. And the world rejects you. And a fellow was, you know, trying to get from the preacher, oh, what a pity. What did I do? What did I say? I'm trying to do my best. How is it? The world hates me. And the world rejects me. But the preacher replied, if they reject me, tell them I reject them. Hate me, tell them I hate their ways. They're different from me. Go tell them I am different from them. I'm not about to compromise. Because, my friend, anywhere you stand, any direction you face, part of the world is behind you. Part of the world is in front of you. Speak to those people that are ready and they want to get to heaven. They want to be part of the few that are saved. 
part of the few sanctified, part of the few ready to move on and to do the work of God. And thank God I'm talking to those few today. God is going to raise Elijah out of this place. He will raise another Ruth out of this place. Another Esther is coming out of this retreat. Another Elisha, double portion, double power, double possession. Another Elijah, another prophet of fire. Somebody there, you'll be one of those few. God is raising up another John the Baptist. Anywhere you are, you might be in the wilderness. They will come out of the cities. They'll come and see you there. Fire, Holy Ghost fire will come upon your life. You will not be among the people, among the chameleons, among the ones that are crawling in and crawling out. Somebody there will stand. You will have a backbone. And then the world will see you. They say a giant has risen up in the land. A giant has risen up in the land. There are not many people like Goliath. There are not many people like giants in the land. But I want to tell you today. If somebody there is saying. I'm not afraid to stand alone. I'm not afraid to be among the few. Today, fire will come inside your soul. And you will not care. You will not mind what anybody says and what anybody does. I am among those few. I am among those few. I said I am among those few. The faithful, favored few. Look at Luke chapter 12. In Luke chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock. Always like that. Always like that. In comparison with the world, fear not, little flock. We're few. In comparison with the city. In comparison with the state. In comparison with this nation. But the destiny of multitudes, the destiny of the sinners lies in your hands. And you're going to rise up. You're going to take the challenge. You'll be among those faithful few in Jesus' name. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We will have the kingdom. I said, we will have the kingdom. You'll have it in Jesus' name. The faithful, favored few. Three points. Number one, the promised provision for the converted few. The promised provision for the converted few. Number two. Purposeful perseverance by the consecrated few. Purposeful perseverance by the consecrated few. Number three, the propelling power. You will not sit still. The, pro the propelling power. You will not be idle. I'm talking to somebody there. The propelling power of the commissioned few the commissioned few these are the people you will conquer the land point number one the promised provision for the converted few if you are born again you'll be among the few if you are saved you'll be among the few if you're looking for a crowd to be like you when you get to your office if you're looking for a crowd to be like you as you walk the streets if you're looking for a crowd to affirm and consent to what you say and how you live in your community you will look in vain because it's only a few a few that are converted a few that are saved a few that are born again 
a few that are committed unto the king of kings and the lord of lords a few that yield their totality unto the lord only a few that take the narrow way that leads to heaven matthew chapter 7 again matthew chapter 7 I'm reading here from verse 13. It says in verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in their heart. Look at the churches around. Look at the multitudes of people milling into assemblies and so-called churches. And you'll find nobody, not many among them, they don't want repentance from sin. They don't want to leave their old ways. They are not different from the worldly bunch. And from the sinful crowd in the world. And they preachers because they want a multitude. They just pet them at the back. Only believe. Only believe. Adulterers come. Only believe. Fornicators come. Only believe. All those uh, people that are stealing. Only believe. And the people that are in occultism only believe. They say they believe and they remain. In all those atrocities they're committing. That's why it says it's a wide gate. In fact, some churches will make the announcement. Here we don't make any discrimination. Anybody fits in here. Because we are community friendly church. Because we are politician friendly church. Because we are techno a technocrat a friendly church. Because here we accept everybody. And you come as you are. And you remain as you are. Nobody will bother you. And when you come here, whatever you want to do, go ahead, do it. Many, multitudes. But Jesus said, those multitudes, they're not saved. They're not converted. If you're going to get to heaven, if you're going to escape the unquenchable fires of hell, look at verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few the words of Jesus. He died for all, but he knew that only few will accept to repent. He wants to save all. But he knew that only few will want his salvation. Few there be that go in their heart. Many are called, look at it, Matthew chapter 20. In Matthew chapter 20, reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. So, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. The last shall be first, the first shall be last. Have you ever thought about those words? The first, those who came first, those who got converted first. Those who came into the kingdom first, as they grow in years, as they advance in experience, as they go through a lot of challenges in life, the older they get, the cooler 
they become. They used to the community now. They used to frown at sin. They used to dredge sinning. And they used to hate sin with a passion. But now they are older. Now they have gone through a lot of pressures. And the first is becoming last. They used to be in the front of the queue. They used to be the people that will run to evangelism. They used to be the one that will knock at sin and knock it hard. But now the first is becoming last. And the last shall be first. There are new converts that are just coming into the kingdom. And as they come, they saved. They're born again. And the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning in their hearts. They know the wilderness they are coming out of. They know the beach they are coming out of. They know the sin they are coming out of. And they hate sin with a passion. And they take the place of the people that were forced. I pray you will not cool down. If you are born again today. And you come and the fire of God is in you. And you happen to be the last one that came. And then the people that came first, they said, cool down, gentleman. Cool down, lady. We've been there before. I was like you before, but now I've cooled down. Abandon those people. Forget those people. Don't get near those people. Those are the people, the first have become last, and they want to keep you at the back bench. You be the last that comes first, you will be in Jesus' name. And then Jesus said, For many be called, but few be chosen. The few who repent and the few who take the word of God at face value. Many called, few chosen. Chapter 22 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 22. Reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, For many are called, but few are chosen. And it's not everybody that raises up their hands to be saved. That get saved, but the few that means business in their hearts that say sin forever, bye bye. All those evil things I got when I was a sinner, I will not choose them anymore. I'm now coming out clean. I come to the Lord. There are not many people like that, only few. That's what Jesus said. Many are called. What does this say many are called? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, a meek and lowly, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. But there are only few that will take the yoke of Christ on them. Many be called, but few chosen. We're looking at Luke chapter 13. Called to salvation. Called to repentance. Called to righteousness. We're looking at Luke chapter 13 verse 23. Then said one, Unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Lord, are there few that be saved? As we look around, we're likely to ask such a question. Look at the many people you come across. I think, uh, you know, nowadays, you come across many people. Before you talk to five, ten people, somebody will say, I'm born again. And before you talk to those new people that come to work in your office, somebody will say, I'm born again. 
Before you touch many people in the market, somebody will say, I'm born again. Are you shocked? Are you surprised? Because some of them, you know them. Some of them, you know their lives. Some of them, you know their behavior. Some of them, they are different from the Bible Christian that we know. And they say they're born again. You shake your head. You ask them, have you ever heard? He that, do, he that is born of God does not commit sin. Oh, they say, I've never heard that. Have you ever heard that the one who commits sin is of the devil? You say what? But I'm born again and I'm still committing sin. What the Bible says, whosoever, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He said, am I born again then? Because I used to tell the Lord that Lord, I'm a big sinner. I'm a fat zero. I used to tell the Lord, I'm still a drunkard. I used to tell the Lord, I'm still a fornicator. I used to tell the Lord, I'm still a gambler, but I'm born again. Who you say? If the word of God is true, if Jesus came to set us free, you're not born again. And you can ask the question, are there few that be saved? You can go ahead and ask another question. Are there few that be sanctified? Look at our church. Look at the emphasis on sanctification in every gathering. And look at the emphasis on holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Look at his life. Look at her life. Look at that family. Look at that worker. Look at that preacher. You must ask the question, are there few that be sanctified? We're talking about being saved. We're talking about being sanctified. We're talking about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost will be upon your life. The passion, the power, the propelling force of the Holy Ghost will be upon your life. You know each in theory. We can ask the question, are there few that be baptized in the Holy Ghost? We're talking about faithfulness. He looked at the faithful one and he said, Be thou Lord and master ruler over five cities, over two cities. Faithfulness. Faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to the word. Faithfulness to the doctrines of the Bible. And then you look at people, you see compromisers to your right, to your left, and behind you, everywhere. And then you're asking yourself, are there few that be faithful? The few people that take in the word of God. And whether preachers are there or not, whether pastors are there or not, they say, this is what I've received. And I'm going to continue in them. Those people are few. Even among those who come to retreats. Among those who come to conferences. And there are few that be saved. Look at this verse 23. That is Luke chapter 13 verse 23. Then said one unto him. Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to end time. You know, there are people that tell us, uh, you know, salvation is easy. Don't let anybody make God difficult for you. You come in, you're saved. Or you raise up your hand, you're saved. Just say, Lord, and you are saved. But is that Savior that is telling us this? Is that Jesus that is telling us this? Preachers have polluted the gospel. Preachers have perverted the gospel. 
I know why. I know why. I know why. If you're a preacher and you're committing adultery, it will be difficult for you to knock adultery. If you're a preacher and you're a liar, it will be tough, impossible, difficult for you to preach against lying. If you're a preacher, you're stealing church money. It will be impossible for you to talk against stealing church money. If you're a preacher, and anytime you're sick, there is one habit list you go to uh, secretly, and you take those concussions from them, it will be impossible for you to talk against idolatry. And because many preachers themselves, they're falling. They're backsliding. That's the reason why it's impossible for them. I see many in our church here, preachers. If there's any fornicator, any adulterer in their congregation, and it's reported to them. Oh, they will say, what are we going to do? You know, this life, there are temptations. And you yourself come in to make the report. How about you? If you're still standing today, who knows what will happen tomorrow? Let's be praying for everybody. Everybody has his own weakness. That's a preacher, backsliding preacher. And if you are the standing one, I'll say that preacher is compromising and you rise up and you discipline and you stop and you speak to that adulterer or fornicator. All the other adulterers who are afraid that, ah, look at, what, look at this pastor. I don't know who will go and report me to him. If they report me to him, this is what he will do. They'll begin a fight. They're not going to heaven. They are there to cover up their immorality and their iniquity. They want to stop the few that are crying against sin. And then they say they might even have, uh, you know, a refrain, somebody there they will present to that preacher and say, you go on. Because if he falls, he will not have mouths again to talk against adultery and fornication. Only few, the few people who are standing, somebody there will stand. Where is the standing one? A woman, you will stand. If they have been trying to muzzle you and stop your mouth, open that mouth wide and the Lord will fill you with power. Because in these last days, iniquity will abound and God needs a few people that will say, I still believe in the salvation of Christ. I still believe. In the holiness of the Bible. I still believe in the sanctification of the Bible. Few that get saved. Few that get sanctified. Few that get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And few that are righteous. This person could have asked the question. Lord, are there few that be holy? Are there few that be holy? You know, there are people today, they might mention holiness, but look at their lives. They preach holiness, but look at their business lives. Money, riches, compromise because of money, and come listen to them preach and talk about holiness. You cannot trust them with church money. And if any, and people, they, they, that's why they try some of them. They preach in such a way as to silence everybody. 
They look in such a way as to silence everybody. And people are complaining. And people, cowards. They are cowards. They are cowards in our church. They are talking at the back. Uh, our preacher. Our pastor. Our so and so. Our leader. Is we know. This is what is doing with church money. They cannot come out. If they write any letter at all, it is anonymous letter. They write in a, you know, confusing way. Pastor, we know that God is helping you. And we know that you are standing for the truth. Not all your leaders are following after you. Some of them come out. Are you a coward? Or are you writing a letter like that? And then at the end of the letter, they'll sign a concerned member. I'm not sure you are born again yourself. You cannot knock at sin and say, I am the one that wrote the letter. Ah, I don't want them to know it's me. Ah, you're not a believer. You're a compromiser. You're not standing for righteousness. You're not standing for the truth. You love your life above the watch of God. And you love those backsliders and those sinners above the word of God. Among those who are walking in the various sections. You know, you just came in like this. And you find your leader with a lady. He forgot to lock the door. You're short. So and so. And then you find the lady there. Our leader. You're afraid. Your heart is beating. You cannot stand there and look at that so-called leader eyeball to eyeball and face to face and let your disagreement with that evil let it register and look at that so called woman leader people have respect for sinners they don't have respect for sanctification they have respect for backsliders they don't have respect for the believers you can't look at that person face to face and let your resentment to evil let it register and then you come out it shakes you for some time you tremble for some time and then that uh, so-called leader will come to you and say hey Whatever you have seen, a leader is a leader. I'm your leader. And if you say anything about me, you disobey leadership. My friend, you are not a leader in this. This is a holiness church. You just have the title. You don't have the power of godliness that goes with it. And so we don't respect you. We don't accept you. We don't honor you. There are few people here. That will stand against sin. And thank God I am one of them. I'm telling you I said thank God I'm one of them. Anybody there with me? I said anybody there with me? Uh, if you are there. If you are there. Why are we hearing of all these things that are happening? And you cannot stand. And you cannot knock at sin. At any time, you know, we try to correct things and we try to put things right, there'll be somebody there. He's a preacher too. And he comes to try to destabilize us and distract us and disturb us so that we'll not concentrate and will not crush that evil. If you are for righteousness, you'll stand for righteousness. I said you'll stand for righteousness. Anybody willing to stand there? You'll stand in Jesus' name. 
choir i see you there thank you very much but you know if you're singing it just needs a few good men you yourself should be one of those few men and one of those few women and you will not protect singing and protect the choir while you know there are people there that are not living straight people there that are not living right and those are the people that will teach other people in the choir they do this and do this so that they can turn away our focus from fighting sin and then we begin to fight each other why did you sing like that why did you go that way why did you go that way somebody is influencing somebody else to distract our attention away from knocking and seeing. I pray you will stand for righteousness. Am I talking to the choir today? You will stand in Jesus' name. And when you stand, it doesn't matter who that may be in the choir. You will fish them out. You will point them out. You will say, Pastor, I caught this one. This one, this is the Jezebel among us. This is the Achan among us. The same thing in all the other areas. And then you're walking in that section, walking in that section, and see there's a scene going on. You'll be among the faithful few. I will be among the faithful few. You are saved. You are sanctified. You're filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And you walk against sin. And you preach against sin. And anywhere you come, if anybody tells you, now I want to tell you something, but you make sure you will not tell anybody, uh -uh, hold on, if you tell me, if it is sin, I'll find a way of getting to the pastor. He will handle this. So if you're going to tell me, tell me but i'm not going to hide an acorn in our church today i'm going to be one of those faithful few and you will be in jesus name and so he tells us very clearly here only few people those who are saved only few people those who are righteous and the people that will stand up with backbone and they will say, I stand for righteousness. You know what? In the earlier years of deeper life, we enjoyed such faithfulness. Great faithfulness. I still remember now the picture comes back to me. I can see myself where I was standing. I can see that beloved brother where he was standing. We're going to have a retreat. And I believe that God allowed this so that he could show his faithfulness. I called him. That time, I used to call people by myself, but not this many. And I said, my brother, we're having this retreat coming. And you're going to give a message. And I gave him the topic of the message. I wanted him to write that down so that he will do a good job at preaching. And I wanted to give him details as to, you know, touch this area, touch this area, touch that area. And um, he, quiet, he quietly listened to me. At the end, he told me, he said, sir, I cannot preach. I said, what do you mean? You can. I thought he was trying to be humble. I thought was trying to dodge responsibility. He said, sir, I cannot preach. I actually wanted to come and see you myself. I am a sinner. I said, what do you mean? He said, I backslid. I wanted to come to you. I didn't want to disturb you before the retreat. I thought I would allow you to finish all that you are doing. Then after that, I'll come to you. He said, see what I did. See what I did. And I also wanted to report to my wife what I have done. But now that you're giving me assignment, how can I preach? I don't want to pollute our church. Those are faithful people. Those are faithful people. I pray you'll be faithful in Jesus' name. 
for the people that hide, that hide. Come and preach, I can preach. Come and sing, I can sing. Come and officiate, I can officiate. And they are backsliding. And they are not among the faithful few that will say, I stand for righteousness. God is calling you today. You will stand in Jesus' name. If you are falling, when you bring it out, when you expose that sin, it will set you free. It will help you. You'll come from condemnation to life. You will come from death unto life. And you will come from defeat unto victory. Somebody there is feeling discomfort hearing the word of God. Is afraid the pastor is touching areas that will disturb him. The Holy Ghost will find you out. And if you're a sinner, you'll be exposed. Backslider, you'll be exposed. You will not distract us here, but the Lord, the Holy Ghost will distract your life. And the Holy Ghost will turn the such light upon your life. And if you're one of the acorns in the church, the Lord will root you out. Every plant my heavenly father has not planted in this holiness church the lord will uproot them in jesus name few the few that be saved and the few that be sanctified and the few that be faithful i pray that god will make you as one of those faithful people in jesus name we're looking at first peter chapter 3 First Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 20. First Peter chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 20 here. Here it says in verse 20. First Peter chapter 3. Here in verse 20. It says, Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited. In the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, you see that? Time of Noah, few. 120 years waiting for the flood to come, few. Wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved. Eight souls were saved. All those many years, Noah, the preacher of righteousness, he emphasized repentance, he emphasized righteousness, he emphasized coming out, coming out of their sin, and coming out into righteousness. Do you see, for those many years, only age saved, few that be saved. Is it like that today? That there are people who are hearing the word and instead of being saved, instead of being committed to the Lord, they're still living in their sin. I pray God will bring you to repentance. Because if you don't repent, damnation will come. If you don't repent, doom will come. If you don't repent, it will be an eternity in the lake of fire. Hellfire. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 1. It says, Unto the angel of the church in Sadi's right, These things says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven, st and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art, tell me, tell me out loud, dead. No so have a name that they live, and yet they are dead. No so have a name that they are saved, and yet they're still in their sins. Those who have a name that they're going to heaven and the power of righteousness is not in their lives. They cannot live a righteous life. 
They cannot live an obedient life. They cannot live a holy life. They have a name that they live, but they are dead. Look at verse 4. It says, Thou hast a few names, even in studies, which have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Only few, only few. That was a name. That was a few in studies. I pray you'll be among the few. Those who are saved, those who have the Savior as their Lord, those who are on their way to heaven, those who say, by the grace of God, I know what it takes, what it takes to get to heaven, what it takes to be in paradise, what it takes to be with the Lord forever and ever. I know it takes repentance. I know it takes faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know it takes righteousness. I know it takes holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And I volunteer myself. I give myself. I give my heart. I give my life. I want to be among the faithful few. The Lord will give you grace. Point number two. Purposeful perseverance by consecrated few. Purposeful perseverance by the consecrated few. When you hear about consecration, that means giving yourself without reservation unto the Lord. Giving your heart without reservation unto the Lord. That means giving your skill, everything you've got without any reservation unto the Lord. That you say, he gave up everything for me. And because he didn't reserve anything, he shed his blood, all his blood. When he threw the spear at his side, blood came out, water came out. All the blood had been drained out of him. That's why water came out after the last drop of blood that came. He gave his whole life. He gave, he gave his whole blood and he gave everything. And because he gave everything for me, that's why I give him back my heart without reservation. I give back to him my life without reservation. I give back to him my skill without reservation. I give my ability back to him without reservation. I give my knowledge to him without reservation. I give my strength unto him without reservation. That's what it means. The consecrated few. And there are few people. Look at all the churches around. And look at all the people that go to assemblies and fellowships and camp meetings and, and conventions and retreats and whatever. And you'll find they're not going there to discover what can I give to the Lord. More of my life. More of my skill. More of my ability. They're not going there to ask what can I give. What can I get? What can I have? Or how will the pastor pray for me? How would I build a house? How will I have a car? How will I get married? How will I have this? That's what they are going for. And it's a pity. That's why some people are here. What can I get? What can you give? You've got enough. What can you give now? How can you sacrifice your time, your life, everything you've got to serve the Lord? Second Samuel chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. And we're reading from verse 24. Look at what it says. And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, 
But I will surely buy each of thee at a price. Look up here. Believers was looking for free, free, free things. Worship free. Blessing free. The energy of others serve me free. I'm here. I need this, I need that free. Other people's time free. They do not want to lay anything on the altar. There are few that will say, see what Christ has done for me. I am going to lay everything down. And it's like, just let me have, just let me have, just let me have. And at there, look up here, preachers that don't pay tithes and offering. Are there leaders who don't pay tithes and offering? Are there workers who don't pay tithes and offering? Are there members of the church who don't pay their tithes and offering? And they come. And they are the first people to claim this blessing. And claim that blessing. And claim that blessing. And use up the time of everybody. I want to see the GS. I want to see the pastor. I want to see the group pastor. I want to see overseer. I want to see, I want to see. But we cannot see you and get you committed. What kind of Christian is this? Only few. The few people who say, I lay my life on the line. I want to serve the Lord. I'm not looking for this or looking for that. All I want is to say, I can serve the Lord more. Here is David saying in verse 24, And the king said unto our honor, Nay, but I will surely buy each of thee at a price. Neither will I offer Bunt offerings unto the Lord, my God, of that which cost me nothing. Neither will I offer any seed to my Lord that cost me nothing. Do you remember that the people in the sanctuary, in the temple, they were giving offerings. And rich men came and they gave. And look at this poor widow. She came and she gave. Look at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. I'm a Christian. Check up. I'm a servant of God. Check up. I'm committed to the Lord in this our church. Check up. Luke chapter 21, verse 1. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in cedar two mites and he said of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all church who is talking here I want to hear you. Who is talking here? You know, there are people that read only one verse of the Bible. And when they read that verse, they hold on to that verse. They don't understand. Recently, 
We read about David. And David consecrated his life. Here was Goliath, a national enemy. Here was Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. He came out. He said, I defy the armies of Israel. If anybody comes out there and he fights against me and he wins, we will be your servant. In his mind, he was thinking that nobody will come out. Because Saul was afraid. All the army became afraid. He came out again. For 40 days, he was coming out and saying, I defy the armies of Israel. Let somebody come out from there. And David had that. And David said, I'll put my life in my hand. And then, you know the story. He fought and he killed Goliath. You know that story? I'm talking to you. Do you know that story? The following chapter. The women were happy. The women were excited. In affirmation of the call of David. In affirmation of the covenant with David. In affirmation of the commission given to David. Those women came out and they sang. And they said, David has killed his tens of thousands. And Saul has killed his thousands. And there are people, the only thing they get out of that story is that, you see now, those women should not have made any comparison. And they told us, our teachers, let's be very careful. When somebody, no matter how good, no matter how consecrated, no matter how he gives his life and he throws his life away to save the church or save the nation, let nobody ever talk about it. Look at these women. And see now the jealousy and the envy of Saul. That's all the lessons some people learned from there. Listen, I read that story. I knew that story. And I've been going to various churches. Deep alive. Here in Lagos at the headquarters. And I see here. Look at church building. What? The people in this group. You have done very well. This is great. I hope that you will complete this. And when you finish. We are going to come over there for revival. Deep and live. Holy Ghost has shaking revival. This is good. And I spoke about that to appreciate. What? They have done in that group. I get to another place and I told them the first time I got there. I said, ah, we've been here for so many years, more than 20 years. Look at where we are. When I got there, two weeks after, wonderful. Everything that changed. And then when I saw something good, I said, this is great. If you can do this in two weeks, in one year, you will do much more. And then somebody there inside said, What's the Jesus doing? He's appreciating the people that build and the people that give and the people that sacrifice. I about the other people and they have been there for 15 years and they have not built anything, will they not feel ashamed? I hope they feel ashamed. I pray they feel ashamed. I intend they feel ashamed. I purpose that they feel ashamed. Will they not feel ashamed? Why is the pastor pressing the people that do well? Didn't he, didn't he remember that when those women sang, then Saul became angry. Of course, I remember. 
I thought you were not like Saul. Somebody there? Are you still at home? I thought you were not like Saul. I thought you were still safe. Saul did not have the spirit of God anymore. The spirit of God had left him. And the spirit of the devil, of Satan, occupied him and possessed him. I thought you were different. I thought you rejoice with those who rejoice. I thought you are going to say, this is a challenge for me. See what that district has done. See what that group has done. And the pastor has spoken about that. We're going to give our lives. We're going to give everything we have. I thought it would be an encouragement to you. Look at Jesus here. Jesus is our pattern. Not those women. Not those women. Look at Jesus here. He saw the people giving offering into the treasury. And he looked up. And he saw the rich men. And he saw what they gave. And then he saw the poor widow having two mites. Her life's income. All that she had. 100%. And she gave it. And look at this. Verse 3. And he said of a truth. Openly. And he said... I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury, of her poverty, has cast in all the living that she had that's jesus christ and we follow after jesus we see somebody making a sacrifice giving her strength giving his strength sacrificially we see some of our workers some of our leaders we're almost tempted to say brother you need rest you're doing too much we're almost tempted to say, let others come and help us carry the load along with this sister. You're doing too much. And then others are just laid back. There's nothing. Only few that are giving their totality. You will join them today. I said you will join them today. And when we see that, we commend them. We appreciate them. And it is the appreciation of Christ himself. You know, it is the people that want to hide under stinginess, hard-heartedness, and they don't want to change as it was, so it is, and so it will ever be. They're building their own houses. They're building two houses. They have a house over here, and they have another house over there in another place. And they send their children overseas uh, to college. And it's so costly. And yet, they accept to worship in a ramshackle building. And those people alone by themselves, if they were like David, if they were like this poor widow, they could raise up a magnificent building there all alone by themselves. Only few people. Who are com consecrated and committed. And thank God you are among the faithful few. I said you are among the faithful few. We come to point number three. Point number three is the propelling power. The propelling power of the commissioned few. Propelling power. Of the commissioned few. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. We're reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. 
Think about the whole of the nation of Israel. They were in their millions and Jesus had 12. What will 12 people do? Very few. But those people, few of them, they were propelled by the power of the Holy Ghost. Chapter 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, few, few, propelled by power, come to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. The commissioned few, the propelling power. Of the commissioned field. Luke chapter 10 verse 1. After these things. After the Lord had sent the twelve. He saw that the field. Was still white for harvest. After these things. The Lord. Appointed other seventy also. And sent them. Two and two. Before his face. Into every city. And place with the he himself what come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Now said he seventy, and he's still saying they're few. And as we look at the work the Lord has for us, you, you know there are people that they're doing the particular work. The territory is expanding. The harvest is so great. We have millions and millions and millions of people that need to be touched. But they don't want to bring in others. They say, as we are, so we are. Jesus at the 12 in Luke chapter 9. And now you are the 70. In Luke chapter 10, even after having the 70, he said, was still few. But these are people that are propelling power that they will not be tired. And you will not be tired. You will not be weary. These are people like Gideon's army. You know the story of Gideon? He made the call. 32,000 came out. The Lord said, the too many, tell them, whoever is afraid, let him go back. 22,000 went back. It remained 10,000. The Lord said, there's still too many. These ones are looking for his zeal. These ones are looking for what's in it for me. This one is looking for, what can I get out of this? Bring them to the water side. I'll try them for you. I'll test them for you. And then those who bench down and drank and drank, said, go aside. And those who put their hands to the water, and they laughed the water like dogs. 300 said, those are the men. God is looking for a field good men, faithful men, focused men, fervent men, the people that will say the only thing that matters to us is the work of the Lord in Judges chapter 7 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon by the 300 men that laughed, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. Let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Faithful few, you'll be among the faithful few. The focused few, you'll be among the focused few in Jesus' name. He has given us a task, he has given us a work, he has given us a commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's a lot to be done. And the people who are willing to sink every energy into the work of the Lord, the Lord is calling upon you today. And the people that will say, here am I, Lord, send me. The Lord will send you. 
and you'll be a great instrument to the hand of the Lord in this generation in Jesus name are you there are you one of the few are you focused are you willing to take up the baton and preach the word of God and stand for righteousness even if everybody around you is compromising why don't you stand up and tell the Lord I will be among the faithful few among the focused few among the fervent few among the few good men and women that God is looking for today stand up and present yourself before the Lord and say Lord I will I will whatever challenges are there I will overcome I will serve the Lord and consecrate my life to the Lord without reservation